that. But maybe we can give away a prize or something like that. We'll, we'll, we'll have fun with it. So definitely sign up. Obviously, the game start on Thursday. So you, you'd probably have to sign up by at least 11 Eastern time, I would think. Or I think, yeah, that would make sense. So shout out again to all you guys for being here. Don't forget to hit that like button. I know it's a little bit difficult because of where it is. And again, YouTube doesn't make it easy to find the like button, but it does make it easy to find the subscribe button. So you shouldn't have to look too far to find that. But uh, as far as the like button, that's going to be a little bit more challenging. Remember, there's three little dots. You click those and then you find the lot, uh, the, uh, the, the like. Lumen in the house. What's going on, Lumen? Appreciate you joining. Appreciate you being first. And then the world of the internet is second. So shout out to you, my man. Appreciate you. I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little bit here so it's a little bit better. And then XD Gamer, we already talked about him. We talked about Jose. We got Sin City tight. Thanks for being a member, man. Appreciate you. I'll try to hook you up with some fantasy, or not fantasy information, but some draft information. I got a lot of draft resources, so I'll put them all together, and then I'll put my little spin on it, and out we out we'll have some stuff. And then eventually it will, it will make its way to everybody. But first I wanted to pay my um, dues to the 145 Club because those guys have been awesome in supporting the channel, even when the channel was, you know, for my point was kind of a roller coaster and most of the time I was just unavailable um, other than watch parties so uh, Rossi power hour Tyler those guys were always there to and James to help step up so I appreciate those guys what's the latest on Chase Young we're gonna get into that tonight a little bit um, so far so good it just depends if you want him or not <laughs> um, clowny but um, yeah I mean Chase Young right now we we know he visited the Saints I think it visited the Carolina Panthers. Um, apparently, he's was supposed to visit the Titans. I don't know if that ever officially went through. Um, and then some of you guys on here were like, hey, he's supposed to be visiting this week. Um, and I don't know if that happened or not. I mean, usually we get some stuff. So Young will visit Saints before Titans, and that was two days ago. Young to visit Panthers, Saints, and Titans, says reports. That was from The Athletic. That was a day ago. And then, uh, so yeah, I would say the Tennessee Titans will still have a, an opportunity to, to do some things. Suro, Suro G W says, go pack go. Shout out to you. We, we had a cool, I don't know, Grossi's the man, but we watched this video. There's a surprise. We have a, and I, it hasn't come out yet. But we have a video, a fan reaction to Dillard being released. So if if you stop, I will I'll make sure to give uh, Grossi tons of credit for his video with the Titans and the Ravens. But it's kind of a spinoff on that towards the end. And if you know anything about Andre Dillard and Titan fans, I think it will make sense. But uh, shout out to Grossi for all he does for the YouTube community and, and for the Packer and NFL community for sure. Did Simmons, he, as far as I know, he did not sign unless he just recently signed. The The thing we got into with the producer's show on Friday nights, which I think is going to start being a thing, by the way. I don't know if you guys are excited about it, but he killed it. He had 1,700 views. He had many likes. You guys were awesome to helping him. $30 in Super Chats. I mean, that kid was pumped up, ready to go, and you should have seen his face when the show was over. He knows what he's got to work on. I mean, we're all there, right? We're all human. We all make mistakes. Um, but it, it's not easy. You know, I kind of the guy over in San Diego, right? You guys watch him, TA. I mean, he's been killing it on YouTube short live. I mean, that guy has been a subscribing machine over the last week. I mean, the guy's got about a thousand subscribers over the last week alone. Um, he's just destroying, he's tearing it up. But, you know, he just gets on there and talks Titans. And um, it's not easy just to sit there for two hours and talk Titans. I mean, it is when you love the team, I guess. But you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, you, you have to be able to, to talk for two hours looking at a camera. And you guys are awesome in the audience. I mean, that helps. But you get what I'm saying? It's not easy just to, you know, hey, everybody, let's just go sit and stare at a camera for two hours and talk. Like, there is a skill involved. So shout out to TA for all that he's done, man. Uh, Lumen007 says, Buckmaster snub me tonight. Uh, Buckmaster, like, the guy, the Buck, Buck Rising, is he upset still about Indiana and not? I mean, he's probably really upset now with the uh, the Illinois Fighting Illini win the Big Ten tonight. Shout out to the Illini. 
Uh, got to win a Titan upload bracket to next to my fan. There, here we go. We'll we'll do something. I don't know what it's gonna be. I'm not gonna promise anything, but the winner will get something. We'll we'll make we'll make it a a fun opportunity. So, I think as the as the weeks go on, maybe I I'll have more of an outline of what we can do. But but it'll be fun. Uh, Hoodie says. Mexicans are better lovers. My wife got me. What is that about? What's that about, Jose? I don't. I don't understand. Oh, I, I don't. I don't understand it. But shout out to Jose. Shout out to Jose. And I guess if your wife got you that, I mean, yeah. Tomorrow says tighten up. What's up, tomorrow? Good to see you, buddy. Think after the season we can make the playoffs. Is lucky, Luffy. And then uh, we got uh, Hamson. Round two wide receiver discussion. Who do we try to get? I, I'll be honest with you, and I'll kind of break it down throughout tonight's show. Um, I don't know. Like, I had a game plan, and the game plan was let's go ahead and draft a left tackle. That's still in play. That's that's a must. That's got to happen at this point. But the second part is I thought wide receiver. But when they went back and brought back – um, oh, oh, I, yeah, 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 I, I got you, man. I got you. I got you, buddy. Um, Jose saying I was trying to read a shirt. It's got the, I don't know. It's got the shirt on there. It's cool. So, so anyways, yeah, I just, I don't know if I'm taking a wide receiver now in the second round because of how free agencies played out and for the fact they brought back Nick Westbrook Akine, like, I don't think he's long term, but for whatever reason, you know, as uh, Teron Davenport said, <laughs> I was listening to him and uh, Jared this week. He said he, he would, if the apocalypse happened, this guy would know how to survive it in WI. And I, and I, for as much as I get on him about the Titans wanting to move on from him, I do have to give the guy a lot of credit. Like he's still there, you know. I, I don't know the the latest on Mason Kinsey, but I will say Kinsey had to be at a, a fundraiser for the Titans with Will Levis. And I brought this up in the last show, and then Rossi was supposed to do a show, and now I think Rossi's show is going to be tomorrow. I'm going to let him show the picture. But it's pretty funny. You got – I don't know who the one guy was. They're all golfing, and then Le- Levis and, and Kinsey were golfing. And they, they both have Titan stuff on. And then um, – but I – I'm thinking it was a fun rate. I don't know that for a fact, but they were all together when obviously Ridley signed. So then they took a picture because who wouldn't take a picture? So I don't know what the latest is for punt return. And that's why I bring up Kinsey uh, because I, I surely don't want to go, go run it back with Kyle Phillips at punt return. So that is probably something in the free agency period. Maybe we still try to do is bring in some guy who can actually return punts, but we'll see. Mario, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Good to see you, bud. Says, what's up? Upload. What's good? Hit that like button. I appreciate Mario. Demario says, second round can go multiple ways. Trade back, cornerback, defensive line, defensive end, wide receiver. I asked my buddy Power Hour, and I said, hey, man, when Baker signed with Seattle over the weekend, I said, well, what's the backup plan? I said, can we go draft at 38 now? And he said, no. Not at 38, but you could go fourth or fifth round at, at linebacker. That That is a concern. Now, I did not watch Locked on Titans tonight, but I saw the little headline clip, you know, his little thumbnail, and uh, his thumbnail said something about panic. Now, I didn't watch the show, and sometimes his uh, thumbnails are misleading, right? When he says trade for guys, and you guys were getting on me about that, and you're like, yeah, he's not saying trade for guys. Well, well, okay, but but his title says trade for guys or whatever. But uh, you guys are saying, like, you know, in the video, he says not to trade for guys. I don't know what he's saying about the panic. But if I'm guessing, I'm going to say he's not panicking, right? That's what I'm guessing. I don't know. If you guys watch this show, let me know. It's a great following, by the way. Great following over at Locked on Titans. Uh, Tony Pollard can kick return, possibly punt. We'll see. Possibly punt. That is that is the question. Let's Let's see if we can find that out tomorrow. And I would feel a lot easier with that, uh, rest assured, with punt returner and, and kick returner. Because those are very important parts of the game. 
Nick Westbrook, Akina is always clutch. Depends on what you're talking about. Talking about blocking, I I thought it was hilarious. Uh, and I love Teron Davenport, but he's on there going like with Nick Westbrook, Akina. He's trying to make a case for why they kept him. And he's like, oh my gosh, like 70% of the snaps, he's on the field. And I'm thinking to myself, I mean, I, I love myself some Nick Westbrook, Akina sometimes, but I'm thinking to myself like, if he's on the field for 70% of the time, he's still only getting 20, 28, 28 receptions. I, I don't know how that's going to make me feel any better. Toronto, I, I don't know. And I can't believe Jared didn't say that, but whatever. It is, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, Handsome R7 says, I feel like D-Hop is leaving after next year. I completely agree with that. I, I think D-Hop's gone. Now, what's interesting, post-June 1st, you save an awful lot of money at cap room by letting him go, trading him, of course. Uh, but I don't know if cap room's really of the essence right now because you'll end up getting it next year anyways. So you got to do what you got to do to find out if Will Levis is the guy. And and I'm kind of shocked on some of you because I feel like, again, it's my opinion. And that's the one thing I love and why this fans created this channel for fans, right? created by fans for fans for a reason to give all of you a platform to speak what you're thinking about the Tennessee Titans and not having to worry about someone basically shutting you up or saying, no, that's not it. And, and poke fun and completely shut you out and all that stuff. Like has happened many, many times on radio. Um, love some radio Blaine Bishop. One of my favorite guys. It was great to, to have Blaine on the show. It was great to, go to the game for the Falcon week when Will Levis scored four touchdowns and Will went or Will uh, Blaine went out of his way to get, you know, all the guys, all my family together for a picture. We ended up on one Oh four, five, the zones website. It was awesome, man. Blaine is the man, but you know, sometimes not all guys are like Blaine on the radio. You know, they're not, they're not as nice. They're they're They come across as very arrogant. Like they know everything. And, like, I got into the last show, like, no offense to Buck. This isn't a rip on Buck. But, like, the dude is from Indiana. Like, he didn't even really watch football in high school. He, he didn't certainly wasn't a Titans fan. Now, he's good at what he does. It's his job. And on the other end, Jared Stillman, which a lot of you can't stand, actually stirs up a lot of crap. But he loves the Titans. So, so it's a little different element but from hearing from you, you guys are super smart when it comes to stuff, and you guys have helped out so much throughout the shows that I've been in um, or any of the team has been in. I mean, you guys are so knowledgeable, and a lot of what you guys say, actually, it's like it's the real deal stuff. Sure, you'll get some guy in here every now and then that's just in here running his mouth about who knows what, but most of you guys come in here and, hey, we I forget. I don't know what the answer is. You guys are, like, right on it. Uh, Demario says punt return twins in the house. Boom, boom. Let's go twins. Uh, just says, uh, he said not to panic. Um, we didn't sign more players. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I, I kind of thought he would do that. He's kind of like revving it up a little bit to, to kind of put the hammer down there. But yeah, I think most of us who, and, and most of you in the room realize like, Rome wasn't built a day. Like, it's going to take time. The Houston Texans thing was amazing last year. I'm not a Texans fan. I know I was born in Houston and my kid's name Houston, but it doesn't mean I'm a Houston Texans fan. But I really feel like the Texans are one of those one-year wonder type teams. Like, you don't usually see that. I'm not saying the Texans are a one-year wonder and next year they'll be terrible, but I'm saying, like, that doesn't usually happen that way. It usually takes time. And, and I go back to Peyton Manning's rookie year when he was 3-13. and 13. Like, it does take some time. Ryan, what's on? I think I missed you earlier, but shout out to you, buddy. Uh, and there we are. Mario already said it before I even said it. He said Rome was built, wasn't built in a day. Okay? XD Gamer, you hear the rumor that y'all might trade Bur Burks to the Jets. I did not hear that rumor. Where do you, where do you get such a thing, XD Gamer? Let me know, man. The dudes are in the house. The dudes. The dudes. Back in the day. The dudes. Shout out to the dudes. I don't know who the dudes are, but they're dudes. So he says, do you like the Titans? Nah, yeah, kind of. Kind of. I don't know if they like me back. 
38 too early for a defensive tackle. Derek, it just depends. I think, again, we're going to spend a lot of time. And we got Maeda Ice, man. Chase, not yet. Apparently, no, not yet. Just kind of did some digging on it. The Athletic, um, shout out to them. If you, any of you are looking to, I'm telling you, you got to do it for the draft. This isn't promoted by The Athletic. It's just a shout out. You guys know we do a thing for around the draft that's called My Guy, right? Or Name Your Guy. And that's a it's a platform for you to get on here, find anybody you want in the NFL draft. It's got to be a guy that's obviously thinking about getting drafted. Like not finding some Division three football player who has no hopes of even making the NFL and then you just basically throw out his name. You know what I mean? And then being like, oh, yeah, is he going to be drafted, right? Well, I don't know. He isn't even – he don't want to have an agent, and he's not even trying to get drafted. So I don't know how that works. But if they're the top guys that are in the top seven rounds or maybe a little bit of undrafted guys, then we should have a little bit of information on them. So you just blurt out your guy, who your guy is, and then we go to work and we we kind of break down the pros and the cons and where they're supposed to fall and, and possibly if it'd be a good fit for the Titans. It's a fun show. We'll probably do it on shorts this year because – when you do it on the full screen, it's just like I think a lot of people get turned off of the fact that like they have their opinion on who they want to draft, and then when they start hearing other people asking about it, it's just then I start talking about it, and they're like, "Not nah, they just then they just move, they're done, right?" Because they don't want to talk about whoever. So maybe we'll do it on shorts. But is it too early to, to draft a guy defensively at thirty-eight defensive tackle? I certainly say no. I think at thirty-eight you take the best player available. I think that's probably where we're at at this point. At, at first, I thought it would be wide receiver, you know, but but wide receiver, you have so much invested in Calvin Ridley. And like, yes, next year is going to be a little bit different, right? Traylon Burks may not work out. Traylon Burks may not work out at all. And going back to my earlier comment, I got sidetracked with Will Levis, like so many of you, which I'm actually shocked. It's not a bad thing. Don't, don't, don't view it as a bad thing. Don't, that's not no shade on you. But this is like to win you over. And, and Will Levis throws four touchdown passes in game one against the Falcons. Many of you are like, sold. You're done. You're all in now. And that and that's fine. I, I get it. I was like that with Marcus Mariota. There were some things that wasn't exactly like, hey, this is going to be like the next Joe Montana. But I think it's too early to call. And I also would say this. The Titans have to spend the next two years figuring out if he is the guy, but they're going to have to keep surrounding him with talent to find out. You can't possibly find out when your offensive line is that terrible like it was last year. You see where I'm going with that? So, yeah, him having four touchdowns and that was fine. And I've always argued this. One of his best, better games that he doesn't get credit for is against the Steelers. And a lot of Steeler fans were, like, very, very positive. Like, wow, Will Levis is going to be a baller. I blame Tim Kelly because Tim Kelly took the ball out of his hands late when when Levis would have went down and won the game. You guys remember that, the reverse to Burks when we got it to midfield. Then we did the handoff to Henry. Then we did the handoff to Spears. It was a third and five. We ran Spears up the middle. And then Levis panicked and chucked it deep to uh, Traylon Burks, and he hit his head out of bounds, and we didn't know what was wrong with him. They took the ball out of Levis's hands when he was just throwing darts. Miami was a great performance by Levis, right? So, again, I feel like Will Levis definitely is going to be the guy. I think we should all feel positive and optimistic, but I also feel like it's the Tennessee Titans' job in Rain Carthon to put a team in place to surround him to give him those opportunities to show what he can do. So, with that being said, like, putting Calvin Ridley around him, great. Trying to fix the offensive line. That's why you got to go left tackle in the first round. Anyone that says anything else, ridiculous. And just as about as ridiculous as someone giving me a thumbs down. Like, literally. What the heck did I even say? A thumbs down to get a thumbs down. Jeez. Whatever. Moving on. But I think 38 sitting there after you get your left tackle, it could be anybody. It could be I'm not, not kicker. But it, it could be anybody. Best available. You know, you don't need the wide receiver now. I mean, I get it. You, a young guy that can go deep, a young guy that's a difference maker, if they're that good, then they'll be there at 38 as being the highest player available is my point. If they're not, middle linebacker. 
I heard this. They're not there at 38. That's what I've already heard from Power Hour, and I trust him. But you need a middle linebacker. You cannot go into the season with Kenneth Murray as your as your starting linebacker with Dr. Gibby. I mean, this is just a train wreck for disaster. You're talking about guys that can't exactly tackle the best. I mean, Dr. Gibby's okay, but Murray's terrible. Murray can get after the passer. He's terrible in coverage, and he can't stop anybody in the run. So, I mean, you're you're take, you're eating up a lot in your middle linebacker unless you're just basically saying, hey, we're, he's going to rush. So tonight's show, I'm kind of getting sidetracked with more of your comments, and I do appreciate it. I'm going to run down some free agents still available because there is still time. So I do agree on with Tyler for Locked On Podcast that there are still available time. But the poll question I wanted you to figure out is, does it not matter? And here's what I mean by the poll question. Should the Titans just sit and wait at this point? Should they just sit and wait to see how the draft unfolds and then worrying about filling holes in free agency? Have they done enough in free agency? You guys could give me a comment on that to explain your opinion, but I wanted you to at least vote on that because I think it's very, very important. I only wish we could do more votes. We're at 67 votes. We're going to try to get, I don't know, maybe 100 votes tonight. But right now, 50, it's really close. 51% of you are saying, yes, it's time to move on. 49% are saying, no, it's not time to move on. We can still sign a few guys. I think we'll go through my list today, and there's some of these guys I think are worthy of being signed before the draft. But I'm telling you guys, I wake up tomorrow, it's on to the draft, baby. I've reached where I need to go, and now I need to start learning these, the NFL draft inside and out. There's no sleeping until the draft. None. And shout out to my son, by the way. Shout out to my wife for giving me opportunity to do two shows today, which isn't always easy with, you know, four kids and and two of them being three and one. And my buddy Nash, my little guy, he was on one of the shows we did recently. <laughs> um, I mean, the guy's crazy at this point. He don't want to play the he's like allergic to toys. He doesn't want to play toys. He just wants to like throw things and destroy things and that's the uh, age he's going through. He wants to destroy the, uh, I don't know, the the like button. So, yeah, if you see that subscribe button, go ahead and hit that for me. Appreciate you. And then, obviously, the three dots, you can find the subscribe button, which isn't as easy. All right, Lumen says, I don't like Buckmaster no more. He thinks he knows everything and won't accept the disagreement. Could have told you that. Could have told you that. I'm not a huge fan for the fact. You guys know my feeling on that. I, I don't like not like the guy. He does. I mean, he does a good job for what he does. I mean, that that's what he's supposed to do. Um, I think he he can try to play both sides sometimes, but deep down, I mean, that's what his job is supposed to be, Lumen. So I'm not gonna like get on him for for not accepting a, a disagreement. But what I would say, Lumen, is that's why I made my channel. So I know I'm not really. I'm kind of not really picking a side in the sand here, but my point is like, I learned long ago when I started this platform, I was very, very appreciative. If you go back and watch my first video, it's terrible. I was wearing a cool Marcus Mariota organ Jersey though. That was pretty cool. Like a metallic, it was white, but it had my, like a metallic lettering and, and uh, green. And it was, it was a really awesome jersey. I love that Jersey, but I remember giving those media, local media guys, tons of credit because the national media never talked about us. It was so frustrating. We didn't have anybody to talk to us. You know what I mean? Like TA came around in like 2014 and he was on, he was doing YouTube videos since 2014, but I never came across TA until I started doing YouTube in 2019. So again, there, for me, there was just, I didn't go to YouTube to, to listen to tights. Um, I, I, you know, YouTube was kind of more of a, I don't even know what it was. Music slash gaming a little bit of that, I don't know, smaller videos. I don't I don't really remember the live video on YouTube being such a thing back in the day as it is now. I mean, now they're pushing YouTube shorts galore. That's what they want. They want it to be all YouTube shorts live. And I know some of you don't like that, and that's fine, but uh, I'll try to do a better job of mixing it up, trust me. But there just wasn't a lot of people to talk, so I'm not going to get sidetracked. I apologize. After the draft, there is another wave of free agency later. Patience. And, and tomorrow, I totally understand, and he's got a guy in the house from the Packers who already gave this away. He said there's tiers of free agency, there's there's levels of it, and one of the best levels is when you get a clearance in the, uh, what would you say, the uh, 
open box category. You know how you can go to Best Buy and get an open box and maybe save 20 to 30% off something, sometimes 50%. Um, I got this camera right here from Target. It's not the best camera. The, the reason what I like this camera is for the fact that it fits on my gimbal and it's, it's easier to balance than the one. Here, I'll go ahead and switch it. I got this foot thing. There we go. Then I got this camera up here somewhere. And that's a DSLR. And that camera is a little bit, it's obviously super heavy. So that's it's terrible to balance. But my point is I brought this camera, bought it from, from uh, Target because of the fact that it was on clearance. And it was going, it basically paid $200 for this camera. And um, it was over, it was like 70% off. It's just ridiculous. So I'm like, I'll be able to find a way to use it. Again, it's not the best camera in the world. But for what I use it for, it's, it's amazing. So, again, those free agents are going to be there, the released guys, especially after the draft when the team don't really need them anymore. So the Titans might be able to fill some of these holes. But one of these holes is middle linebacker for sure. We're at 90 votes. We're 10 votes away. Definitely help us out there. Upload. If fans don't like you back, you can always be a fan of a team in North Florida, XD Gamer. XD Gamer, you're like becoming one of my obviously favorite Jaguar fans. And that, and that says a lot because, you know, I got so many. But UCF Jaguar, man, I, I love that guy. Um, and he's a part of our uh, AFC South roundtable, which I know Rossi and, and Power Hour have been on there multiple times. It's more of Rossi's thing, but Power Hour is on there every once in a while. I'm sure I'll get on there at one point. But, um, man, I, I appreciate you stopping by. I, I do. He says uh, A to Z Nashville is a boring show. I respect you and Big Mike, Bossy Ross. You guys let me be much like, hey, Lumen, you're the you're the best, man. Thanks for all you do. Heard about Burks going to the Jets as well. I've not heard about that one, but I will look into that. And as you guys know, I do notes. I'm one of the few, I think, that actually do notes on a notebook still. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, Burks to Jets. Now, I am a fan of trading Burks if you can give me a position whether it come in the draft, not like a sixth round pick, but if it comes in the draft or something in return. And that in return could be a left tackle, who's decent, okay? A right tackle, who's decent? A cornerback, who's decent? A pass rusher, who's decent? And a middle linebacker, who's decent? And you got to be decent like... Good enough to start. Okay, good enough to start. Not like decent uh, Trey Avery where you're the fifth cornerback and you're giving up six touchdowns and 300 snaps. Not, not like that. I'm talking about good enough to start and be productive. Even better than Dr. Gibby. Sportacular says cornerback is also on the table in the first round. I... <laughs> If you trade back, I think it opens up a whole other can of worms. If you trade back, you, you cannot pass on a left tackle. Again, it's not sexy. It's not like, hey, you know, I remember when we got Jack Conklin. We, we traded with the Rams. Apparently, again, if you haven't heard this story, it's, it's quite wacky. But uh, was it Robinson and Sneed were at the urinal discussing the trade from the Titans all the way to the Rams at 15. The Titans had number one. The Rams had 15. And they ended up making that trade. They should have made draft day and two about Robinson to Sneed in the urinal. That's what they should have done. They didn't do it. I would have definitely watched draft day two because I love draft day. The first draft day. I thought it was awesome. Besides the father mother thing that, you know, the, the ashes. I didn't really care for all that at the end or in the, in the middle ish. But, but I thought it was overall, it was pretty cool. Uh, draft day was, I, I love it. I'll watch it. It's like a family tradition. They should play it 24-7 like they do Christmas Story on Christmas Day. And we should do it. And happy St. Patrick's Day for all the uh, the Irish out there. Yeah, I'm actually 25% Irish. So I should be wearing green right now. That's on me. I'll pinch myself. Boom. Ow. There it is. So, again, cornerback, I'm not sure you're doing that in round one. I want to do left tackle. That's what I want to do because, ultimately, it's about – solidifying you could have and I, this is gonna really tick me off 
All right. But you could have your left tackle for the future, not five years. No, 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 no. Ten years. Rack them up. Ten. Diaz. Ten years. Okay. And you also could have Skaronsky. Ten years, which would be nine. But but you get my point. For the next nine years, everybody, you could have the best left side in all of football solidified for the next nine years. That is amazing. Your center's going to be there for at least, I mean, he was signed for four, let's just say at least three more years. It's that right side that's a freaking mess. But if you don't take the left tackle, now your left side is still in question at left tackle and still your right side. That That is concerning to me. You got your Calvin Ridley, you got a receiver, okay? So I'm not over-investing in receiver. Now with the Bears trading fields, which is amazing that they only got that for fields. I, I love fields, right? If I was the Titans and I didn't have Malik, I might make that trade for a six-round pick and just have him there in case the Levis thing doesn't work out. And then you 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 would have fields. But again, I get Rand's point. He doesn't want to create more chaos for for Levis than he needs to. And he certainly drafted quarter or Robinson drafted Levis. And then um obviously Rand drafted um I'm sorry. When you talk, you talk, right? I caught that one. When John Robinson drafted Malik Willis, the next year, Rand Carthon trades up to take, right, to take Will Levis. I don't know if he wants to spend more collateral from via trade, even if it is a sixth-round pick, for Fields. Because eventually you're going to have to pay Fields. or You'd already have to pay Fields, I'm sure. So I get it why they didn't make that happen, but as a fan of Fields, I thought that would have been pretty cool to see Justin Fields uh, back up Will Levis for a year and then see reevaluate what we, what we got. But second round, again, I I think it opens the door if you take that left tackle to best available so corner becomes available. But but again, if you have a chance to get a uh, middle linebacker, though, man, I'm telling you, that that's a major flaw on this team right now. People aren't seeing it as much as I am, but it is. I don't see defensive tackle being too early. This game is won and lost in the trenches. Uh, we need to replace Autry and Tart. Got to put someone next to Simmons. You're right. Now, there is something out there that maybe, you know, Tier Tart didn't get along with Vrabel. Makes sense, right? But if you heard people talking, it more or less, he did it out of spite, in spite of the team, and um, not rewarding someone who didn't want to work hard. So they got him out of here. And it is a little concerning that the Texans, the team that picked him up, did not even try to re-sign the guy and bring him back. So that's kind of difficult. But again, this is a last chance you star on Netflix that never got the opportunity because he was kicked off the team before the season even started. Forget if it was season two, maybe. So I don't know how much you want to invest in him. Uh, in the second, says Jay Bryant. Alex, hey, upload. Did you see that you at UCF Jaguar was saying Calvin Ridley needs to be investigating for taking the Titans offer? Now, Alex, if you watch the skits that I did, especially the one with D hop, I made a point and I was right that they would have made that all about all about the new England Patriots. And they did. They made it all about the new England Patriots about not signing a guy. Right. I got that in today reading up and, and basically uh, educating myself for the show. Got the same thing today. It was all the Patriots had an offer on there. I can't believe they didn't take the Patriots offer. Patriots really thought they were going to get them. So, so the Patriots were also there. The thing with Ridley though, the Jaguars tried to play the game and, and they lost. That's, that's the, that's the bottom line with what the Jaguars tried to do. The Jaguars over invested in Ridley via the suspension. So they wanted to stash him on the roster and then when his contract came up, they were going to be able to put it and solidify an offer, an offer, and he was coming back. So they kind of just assumed this was going to happen. So the Jaguars go out and do their business and make some moves. And lo and behold, you know, after signing Gabriel Davis, they thought they still had Ridley coming back. Well, what happened? Ah, 
So the t- here come the Titans. Opens the door for Tennessee and New England, but Tennessee ended up coming in. And you guys have done eBay before. I don't do it as much as I used to, but eBay was all about making that bid at the right time. You could have been bidding back and forth with the person. And then all of a sudden, some random person comes out of the woodwork in the final hour and takes whatever you were trying to bid on. That's exactly what happened. So he can be upset about it. I, I mean, I'm shocked he's not even saying, I'm, I'm shocked he's saying like, not saying that like, you know, Calvin's terrible or they'll be fine with that. I'm, I'm, he probably is by now, but uh, yeah, I am shocked that he's making that a big deal. Yeah, they're on their third best pro ball team. Uh, what do we got here? Sin City says, yeah, they're on their third best pro ball team in Florida. XD Stoner Titan, thoughts on Bill Can- Callahan making the O-line a top 10? I don't know if they'll make him a top 10 this year, but I would imagine Bill's going to be around for a while. This isn't like a Dean Pease thing with Vrabel, where after a year or two he was done, and then they brought him back, and then he was done, and then went to Atlanta. I think this is a great opportunity to work with his kid. And um, I think Bill's going to enjoy the moment, enjoy family quality time, um, helping out the head coach, Brian Callahan. And who knows? Maybe there'll be even a little bit of time for Bo Callahan. It's a joke. But um, I think a lot of you, I'm surprised, and uh, more people aren't pushing that joke with Bo Bo Callahan. I was going to do a free agency profile on Bo and a draft profile on Bo, but uh, I don't know. Locked on brought uh, Burks to the Jets. Like he brought it up. Derek, did he bring it up? Or did he hear it from somewhere? Uh, I don't see anything specific. Um, I do see on Reddit. The Jets were connected to the trade uh, rumor with Traylon Burks via Twitter 20 hours ago. So maybe that's something um, on there. I'm sure, you know, the Jet, like obviously the spun comes out 10 hours. I don't know what the spun is, but says that uh, they are pursuing a trade for a wide receiver and they do list Traylon Burks. So that's probably what you guys are talking about. And then the guy himself locked on is even on here and he has something too about if somehow that, that they could trade. Uh, he's saying something about a fourth-round pick. So, again, it's got to make the team better. And right now, you can't have it both ways. A lot of you think Mariota or Mariota. Somebody put Mariota in the chat. Uh, so many of you think Traylon Burks, this is going to be his year. And then now it's like, if it's going to be his year, then why are you going to trade him, right? The Jets are getting possibly Corey Davis back. Um, or they'll let him go. We'll see what happens there. Volcano, shout out to Tennessee, the two seed. Upload, Will Levis has talented supporting cast. He's getting a little bit better, my friend. It's not all the way there, but he's getting a little bit better. Ricardo. Oh, I got you, Sin City. No worries, buddy. Uh, Ricardo says, if you were like that, there's the Mariota. It's your fault. Uh, Derp says, bro, never stop thinking about free agency. Are we up to 100 yet? We are 125, and right now, are you done with free agency? Only going to worry about the draft. 46% are saying yes. 54% are saying no at this point. Upload, love the channel, man, but I don't like the shorts live. Jared, you've said it before, my friend, but here's the deal. Jared, I'm going to be honest with you, 100% honest, because that's what I am. I'm an honest guy. I'm going to tell you how it is, okay? A respectful guy, but but I'm going to tell you how it is. Right now... There's a crossroads. I'm going to draw it for you. It's right there. Okay. That's where we're at. And for whatever reason, right is right. Wrong is wrong. Um, And I'll probably get in trouble for saying this because I am in the partnership of YouTube. But YouTube has made their mind up. They have realized, according to YouTube, and I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. They've realized that um, majority of people that watch YouTube watch it on their phones. We all are human, and majority of people have short attention spans. So they're constantly moving around. They're not just going to sit on their phone watching a live show for the, for like an hour or two hours or three hours. They might watch it for five, ten minutes, move on to something else, and maybe come back. 
Okay, hopefully they hit the like button, the subscribe button, right? Sometimes people come in here, they never come back ever again. Doesn't matter what I talk about. They're not coming back, right? So the point I'm trying to make, Jared, is YouTube is pushing the heck out of this platform. They are pushing the heck out of YouTube Shorts Live. And they are basically putting their foot down. Unless you have an established crowd like Grossi, they are putting their foot down and they're saying, halt, and it's all going here. So, again, I, I'm going to try to do both. We did a show. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. We had a great show. Great, great show. Uh, I think we had over 300 of you in here. It, it was an amazing show. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll try to do both. That's what we're going to try to do. But right now, we're just trying to get on the wave here uh, because we don't want to be left behind. And there are going to be a lot of content creators, apparently, what I've read, that are going to be a little bit left behind if they're not established. And I would not say we're super established. I think we do a good job. Um, I am super thankful for 12,400 or 500 subs or whatever we got right now, and I appreciate every single one of them. But at the end of the day, like, according to YouTube, like, we're just a little fish in the big old sea. And um, I've learned the hard way, man. You can ask any of these other guys. They've never had to wake up that their channel's gone. They've never had to wake up and see that all of a sudden they're no longer a part of the YouTube uh, uh, partner program and you have no idea what you even did, right? So there's a lot of them that never have to face that. It's it's troublesome. Can you imagine waking up and um, everything's gone? There's nothing on the channel? That happened Sunday, week one, NFL season 2023 versus the Saints. Now, luckily, it took five minutes to get it back. <laughs> But it doesn't always work out that way. There's a lot of horror stories out there. But, Jared, I appreciate you, and I'll try to do more and more. I, I will. Uh, neighbors available. You got to take him. Uh, Gus says, with strength of a wide receiver, regardless, Burks pans out or not, I'd expect at least one drafted, maybe two. You need – okay. I totally get that, Gus. Totally understand it. But if you're sitting at 38, you're sitting at 38, and you know your cornerback situation – you know your inside D-line situation. You know your linebacker situation. And then you know the wide receivers. You're going to bank the crap out of D-hop one more year. And you're going to bank the crap out of Ridley. Those two guys alone should eat up a lot of the targets. These other filler guys, Nick Westbrook, Akane, okay, whatever. Kyle Phillips, most of you are a lot higher than, than I am on him. Okay, but but whatever. We'll throw them in the discussion. And then you add Traylon Burks, and I'm sure some random guy is going to come along or they'll draft a guy late, okay? But my point is, like, you, you can't just not have a middle linebacker. And that's the only issue I have with Rand is he's taking a shot in the dark on bringing in a talent, Kenneth Murray Jr. You're bringing him in, and you're hoping it's going to pan out you're hoping you can get him back to his rookie year where he was decent, or you're hoping he turns into the player that he is on Madden because he's he's a freak on Madden. It was what I've heard. It's what my kid tells me, the producer. So not having a middle linebacker, you cannot stop the run. You are going to get gashed. It's not going to matter what you have in Will Levis because Levis is going to have to throw touchdowns every drive, and if he doesn't, you're going to lose because you ain't going to stop the other team. And then you don't have anybody next to Simmons, so now you're really getting gashed. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm getting fired up, and that's what I'm trying to say. And he's got work to do. Rand has work to do. Now, doing a little digging. Hasn't come up yet. I thought it would. It hasn't. It's fine. I got you. Cap room. Two different reports out there. One from, like, Spot Track or whatever. $52.1 million the Tennessee Titans have now after releasing Andre Dillard. The other one says... 48.1. So let's just say hypothetically between 52 and 48 cap room. We got a lot of cap room. Okay. That's not the issue. The issue is what the show was designed to do, which we got off track is to try to get some of these guys to help fix it. It's just, I don't have middle linebackers that are going to be just showing up to be able to come in here and fix it. Now, I'm going to search one more time when you guys are on here, but according to my list, I don't have any middle linebackers and that really hurts me. Because that's the one position right now defensively we are going to need. 
paying running backs a total waste of time. So Beville Bobcat, I like the name. B, 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 Bobcat. Okay, but, uh, whatever. Here we go. Your comment, do you think Pollard's a waste of money? Just want to know. Honest opinion. Brian, we're thinking the Vikings are trading their second first-round picks to move up for a quarterback. Well, again, it would have made way more sense if the team behind you needed a quarterback. That's not there anymore. So it still could happen. You know, Rand might be able to work out a deal, but you're not nearly going to get as much attention at that seven spot as you would have if Atlanta still needed a quarterback. But unfortunately, Atlanta doesn't, and it is what it is. Demara says that's why the second pick can go a lot of ways. Also, teams will continue to release good players. That's exactly true. The bargain shopping, what I was kind of getting to with the the whole open box at Best Buy, and I know that got derailed. Charles, thanks so much for being a member, man. I appreciate you. Titans have realistically around $33 million to spend. They can only really send veteran, sign veteran minim, minimums. And then Porter says, can I have a shout-out? Yes, you can, Porter. Appreciate you, buddy. Porter Zeman, the Z-Man. Love it. Love it. Sin City said would be so sick if we four quarterbacks go in the top six. Heck, yes, it would. Heck, yes, it would. Uh, actually, Clearwater, but 20 minutes downtown Tampa. Enjoy the weather over there. Uh, running backs draft them in the late rounds. One will eventually pop. Paying free agent ones is a waste. Jared says, stop spamming. We got we got him a shout out. We'll give him one more shot at it. If we still get some spamming, we'll have to move on. Jordan Love is better than Tom Brady, says the dudes. And then we got uh, you shop at you shop smart, tighten up loader. Appreciate you. Uh, what else we got? Jared. Yeah, I hate the blue helmets. Go back to the white ones. Afio, upload. Who's your favorite pickup in free agency? Love it, man. Great question. Who's my favorite pickup? Well, the one I said you had to have, which I feel good about. I missed a lot of them, but I was right about this one. I said you had to have a center. Said it was a must because that meant you didn't have any, you didn't have to worry about Brewer anymore. You could really have a guy in uh, Jones, Ben Jones, that we severely missed last year. Most underrated Titan. Really, Ben Jones. Not Julio Jones, Ben Jones. So you get the center, you bring him in, and um, you had to pay him. Highest free agency signing for a center, I think, a guaranteed money in NFL history. But Cushenberry, I mean, he'll he'll be good. He'll 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 solidify that line, but you still need a left tackle. And then right tackle, you'll have to see what Bill can do with either Raidens or Nick Petit Ferrer or whoever else they're going to pick up. So great question, though. Who's my favorite pickup, though? <sighs> wasn't exci- I wasn't super excited about Pollard. Um, I was excited to get my center. Uh, not really excited about Rudolph. I mean, the more I read about Rudolph, the more I like it, especially talking to Steeler fans. Um, Calvin Ridley, I mean, not going to lie. I mean, I like Calvin Ridley now. I mean, more looking at him, but I'm going to go with Cushenberry. Yeah, I know it's a lineman. I'm boring, but I, I think it's going to be the most vital. Sub upload. Stop saying tighten up. I'll be listening on my way. Tighten up. Oh, just stay, stopping by to say tighten up. Appreciate you, man. Anvil time for the young draft assets, not free agents. Free agents are now don't really uh, with your window. Appreciate you, man. Go Colts. Here the Colts and the Titans are both in on Sneed from the Chiefs. I don't know how true that is, Anvil. I don't know what you're hearing. Let me know. But I think it's uh, obvious with what the Titans are doing. I don't know about that. 106 of you in here. Again, don't forget to hit that like button. It just helps out the channel. It gives us life in the Internet. Right? Again, I, I mentioned this earlier. Okay. I wasn't like downing myself here, right? Definitely wasn't like hyping myself, but I wasn't downing myself either, but I'm being real with y'all, right? Like guys like me in this platform, in this universe, get more out in the open with more likes. If you don't get more likes, hey, it's fine. I don't stop. I keep going, right? It is what it is, but I'm just saying that definitely helps the channel. Super chats may help the wallet, right? They may help, right? Adding a little extra money to the income, that's okay. 
That's great. But the thing that helps the most with the channel, with the health of the channel, is the like button. It really does. It opens the door. So I appreciate every single one of you that actually took the time to find the like button because just like I mentioned, YouTube Shorts is pu- or YouTube's pushing YouTube Shorts live, but they're making you dig a little bit harder to find that like button. All right, so let, let me get into the show a little bit. I feel like, and then we'll get into your comments. I really do like the interacting. Uh, right now we have 155 votes, so please try to keep helping us out there. Uh, I asked you this question. Is it time to forget free agency and for the Titans especially to start zeroing in on the draft and then worry about free agency after the draft and filling certain holes? Like, that's real. Like, we may be there. Um, I know we got a few guys straddling in and out, but the Titans might start zoning in on the draft and then worrying about free agency. A lot of teams do that, especially if they're interested in signing Clowney. They know they don't have to worry about signing him before the draft. He signs a week before the season starts. And, Joseph, I see you, Florida, Derps. I'll get to you guys here in a minute. So here we go. So I fit, let me, oh, let me, right foot. Bam, there it is. All right, start with our first guy, Donovan Smith. Now, you guys can comment on these guys. I, I don't really I know Donovan Smith is available. I looked him up. Donovan Smith, again, is a tackle for the Chiefs. He can help, right, because he's going to have the – he's not the most amazing guy, but he is a tackle. He's six foot six, 338 pounds, uh, used to be a buck. He was drafted in the second round. Okay, I know it's not a first rounder. I know it's not as good as Andre Dillard. His run blocking is awful, 45.1. His overall, okay, his overall is 55.4, and his pass blocking is 60.3. But he did have 749 snaps last year. So that's something to at least think about. The issue with him is, you guys probably already know in the chat, wherever that is, it's penalties. Got a lot of penalties. So last year alone, he had nine. He gave up two sacks. But again, he's 748. I don't know how much he's going to cost, but his grades are atrocious. His best game was at Denver. Okay. His best game was at Denver. His worst game was against the LA Chargers and Denver again. So he had his best game against Denver in week eight and worst game in Denver week six. So he's improving guys. It's a good thing, right? But I think overall, you look at him. He was great in 2021. He was pretty good in 2020. He was pretty good in 2019. So even in 2022, his pass blocking overall was a 70. It's 70 overall, right? That's not terrible. The run blocking, though, is awful. But again, we got to decide what we're doing when it comes to the Tennessee Titans. Are we going to be a run ground and pound team? No, we're not. So bringing in one of these guys and maybe have him duke it out for right tackle, add him to the list. If he's cheap, I don't know if he's cheap or not. He probably isn't, but that would be one of my guys. I got more guys. You guys are going to know most of these guys. Anyways, I don't think we're hiding any surprises. I don't know if he does it much for you. Um, I don't know if Willie gay signed and I don't know how good he is. I just know I met his dad once at a hotel before a Titans game. Um, but like I said, he would be a middle linebacker. I don't know if he signed. Uh, Gus says it's for linebacker, plenty of time to fill that position. No re- reason to panic in March. And I'm not panicking at linebacker, but I can't ignore it. And I'm not going to ignore it. I got to figure out something fast or at least be able to drop my draft board and have some options so I can feel better. Like I feel better about left, left tackle in the draft. Now, if something happens and the quarterbacks don't go early, and you start to see a run on tackles, and we're kind of stuck there at seven, are we going to get a receiver? I mean, I don't know if a linebacker is going to be there, like worthy of that pick. I certainly don't want to do the Corey Davis thing where we just took a wide receiver to take one at five because we didn't trade back or we just felt like there was going to be a run on him, and so we had to take him then. Florida 999 says, keep Burks. See what he is, uh, three, four wide receiver. If you're only going to get a fourth round pick for for him, I mean, keep him at this point. You keep him. I mean, fourth rounder, fine. I guess you got Ryan Tannehill a couple years ago from the Dolphins. You guys shocked Ryan Tannehill isn't signed yet? You shocked that Nick Westbrook Akine tried to run around the 
NFL, 31 other teams and couldn't find a job? Are you shocked on that one? I don't know. Uh, Beville, Bobcat, running backs, draft them late in the rounds. They'll eventually pop. I think we already got to that one, right? We keep going down the list here. Left tackle at seven, right tackle at 38. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Uh, Beville is talking about the injuries. Pass left instead of run left. Derp says Foster really likes Mason Rudolph. A lot of Steelers do. They're going a little further with it, though, and I don't want to go there yet, Derps. I don't want to go there yet because I feel like he would have worked in Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh's fan and and Foster playing for Pittsburgh before he knows all these guys, right? He knows all the media guys. He knows all the guys that still are in that Steeler organization. We just went over 50 likes. Shout out to you. But the issue I think from Steeler fans, Steeler, Steeler nation. Okay. Here we go. Steelers, terrible towel, all that stuff. They did not have the offensive line for him to excel. He is not a quarterback like Justin Fields who can survive out of the pocket. Will Levis can, let's be honest, Will Levis can survive out of the pocket. Even to a degree, especially in 2019, Ryan Tannehill could survive out of the pocket. Mason Rudolph could not, okay? For for his attributes and what he could do, he's a good quarterback, but you got to protect him. And Steeler fans tell me they didn't do a good job protecting him. So I'm sure Foster, being a lineman himself back in the day, probably feels the same way or hearing the same thing. But I don't think we should go with, like, QB controversy yet. But, hey, man, if he gets hurt, Levis, don't be surprised if the fans fall in love with Mason Rudolph. And, and last time we were live, somebody brought up the thing with Garrett again. Like, again, my point with Garrett is, number one, Like, I've not heard anything about it since. But number two, like, Garrett said some things, and there there are some very hurtful, terrible, awful things that Garrett said that Rudolph told him, okay? But the Steelers said that is not – they did not believe it one second. And and we're all human. We, We can make mistakes. I get it, right? So, so we might think we know someone and, and ends up being like, oh my gosh, like John Wayne Gacy. Like he was, he was a fun guy apparently, right? He was fun. People enjoyed him. People like talking to him. They loved his artwork. Okay. They didn't know about the basement crawl space. They didn't know about the 33, whatever they found in there. They didn't know about all that stuff. That's my point. So I get like the the whole like Garrett thing and so, sometimes like, hey, that's a knock. But at the same time, like there were so many Steelers that went to bat for Mason Rudolph. I don't think they're going to bat for him for saying those things supposedly they said if they did not trust him and know him. I mean, they know him better than we know him. So and again, Tomlin was on the record constantly protecting Rudolph Tomlin's been in the league how many years it's amazing to me that Steeler fans not all of them like Tomlin but Tomlin has had a winning year every year okay I know they want to win Super Bowls every year fine you know me being a Titans fan I just like to win one Super Bowl how about that give me one so again you're gonna hear a lot of that chatter but I'll tell you what Mace Rudolph goes around slinging it preseason I'm telling you there are going to be a lot of Titan fans that are going to fall in love with Rudolph. So we'll see what happens. Um, Derp says, yeah, he can win some win some games. Fields chose his destination among the Bears. I doubt he would have chose Tennessee. He might have, though, with Callahan, because a lot of you talk great things about Callahan and, and how everybody loves to work with him. So who knows? Tighten up. Rossi says, make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button. We appreciate you all. Thank you, Rossi. Rossi will be live tomorrow night and power hour. They're doing a double, double show. Ryan says Titans haven't drafted an offensive line in two years in a row and first 30 years. Will history continue? I I think history stops. They're going to take a left tackle and they painted that picture beautifully, beautifully at the draft. And it's just like, mm. And here's the thing. 
This is why this is, oh my gosh. Like if you, you if you're not a Titans fan and you just got on, you know, you just started liking the Titans. Like shout out to you by the way. How about some claps for new Titan fans out there wherever they live and wherever they are, maybe they're just being born. Who knows? They don't have any other choice. But man, if you say you're a Titans fan during the Vrabel John Robinson era, then you can't come on here and believe everything you heard at the combine. Because you go back to that year when Henry and Tannehill were free agents. It's just, again, they are going to try to find a way to fit what they want to do. That's what it is. So they're going to say some things that may not always be true. And they, you knew they went in. All of them were aligned with wide receiver. I mean, they were so vocal about wide receivers. I mean, it's not even funny. And people making videos, hearing uh, news stories. Oh, Titans, they're going to draft. The wide what, is a, what is in it for the Titans to let everybody know what they want to do at the draft? I mean, if they were number one, that's one thing. But they're number seven. That's all I'm trying to say. That's all I'm going to try to say. Kenny Powers, love it. Alex, my dude, Marcus made a visit tomorrow for the Titans. I know my son was pretty high on him. A B A G B J Dotty. What do you think about the Cincinnati Bengals trading Joe Mixon and putting T? Hay- oh, we got a Bengal fan in the house. I, uh, I mean, what's funny is, did you hear the story, J Dotty, about the Bengals trying to trade for Justin Jefferson? And they they offered two first round picks supposedly in T Higgins. I don't know if this is true or not. Vikings said, "Nah, we're good." I'll tell you what, though, give us Joe Burrow. You can have Jefferson straight up. I thought that was hilarious. That can't be true. That needs to be on draft day. Locked on said that he's going to talk about Burks to the Jets tomorrow. And B says, "I mean, I." Again, if, if what I'm reading right now, because it's out there, fourth round pick, I don't think, no offense to locked on, but I don't think there's much to talk about because I'm not doing it. I'm not going to trade Traylon Burks for a fourth round draft pick right now, bringing back NWI. Now, draft happens, you take someone at seven, I don't know about Marvis Harrison Jr. slips. You trade up and get them at six, something crazy like that. You you wiggle your way to getting a stud wide receiver, at least you think you do. Then, yeah, we're back to the table, impossible trade. But I'm not doing that to Rand Carthon right before the draft and putting him behind the eight ball when it comes to having a option where he's drafting. I don't want him to have to zone in on draft, drafting a wide receiver there if he doesn't have to be. I'd rather him try to fill holes that we really need at this point, like middle linebacker. That's what I would hope he would do at some point and left tackle. He didn't say where he heard it. It seems like it spotted up on Reddit and it looks like it's coming from the Jets. That's what I looked at up right now. Um, Locked on works for Sports Illustrated, so he's going to loan obviously more than I would. But um, it looks to be that uh, the Jets are looking for a wide receiver. So makes sense to go around the league and see who's available. That's not going to cost much, and you possibly could resign him. But, yeah, uh, free agency with um, the Bengals, man. I, I, I think the Bengals are going to bounce back. I think I said that in my last show. MB says Corey Davis said that he would like to be close to his home in Nashville. I would love to have Corey. I, I'm in the minority here because a lot of you don't want him, and that's fine. But – Again, if you had a, if I had an option to pick between NWI and Corey Davis, and I know NWI can do a lot on special teams, I will find some guy to do special team stuff. I would love to be in that story with Corey Davis because some of you never met him. I have. The kid grew up, well, he's not a kid anymore, right? Um, he grew up like an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes north of where I live. We went to his camp right when I started my YouTube channel. And I remember tweeting the guy about going to the camp and and all that stuff and telling him I was a season ticket holder. I drove from Illinois to the games and he never got back to me. And that was like months before. 
And I remember showing up and seeing him and, and going up and talking to him. And I met his mom. His mom was really cool. It was very family oriented. Uh, Titus was there. His older brother who ended up passing away the base. I think that was the last year. Remember he, he played that. Was it a Thursday night game against the Colts? He ended up playing that same week. His brother passed away. His brother was older, but his brother was everything. And, um, like there was just such a, and, and you know, a lot of families are close, but it was such a cool event to see him run a free camp for kids with his family and his whole family being there. Um, but no, he, when I got through the, got up to talk to him and I, I was like, Hey, you know, man, I'm from, uh, where I'm from. And I said, Hey, uh, season ticket holder. And he goes, you tweeted me. And I said, yeah, yeah, I did. And he remembered. And I remember, uh, so the next time, the next time I tweeted him, which was the next day, he retweeted it and he gave my son a positive, uh, I don't know, he said some really nice things about my kid. He's a really great guy. Did he produce for the Titans all the time? No. And a lot of us remember the last game against the Ravens when he just kind of seemed like he quit. But you know what? Like, that was a tough game. There were a lot of people that seemed like they quit. Arthur Smith? Yeah. That was a bad game. Um, we went up 10, nothing early, I think. And we ended up losing 13 to whatever it was. So yeah, I would still love to have him back. All right. Uh, let's keep going up. Oh, the chat. Let's go back to the chat. Uh, we are one ninety three, So we're seven away. The question was, is it time to forget about free agency or start and start worrying about the draft only? And 41% are saying, yes, it is time. And 59% hey, like, we can still talk about some free agency. Alex says, get a computer. You talking to me, Alex Smith? I got a computer, man. Uh, what else we got? Free agency isn't over, says boss man. Harpoon Bakery. Ridley is going to be great. AFC South. He's uh, going to be a monster. Already knows how to play against every defense. He's going to shred the AFC South. I hope so. Uh, we got Raven in the house. Probably we can't fix everything one season. This is just a fact. It's going to take two free agencies and two drafts to get this thing together. Top tier says the cap numbers without the rookie contracts will actually cost around. And again, having a top seven pick in the draft um, will hurt. Having 38 will hurt a little bit, but then you don't have a third round pick in the four. So, I mean, they always say like save around five, six million dollars from your cap, but we would still have, like I said, spot track 52.7 minus five, six. I mean, we're still 40 plus, so we should be able to sign. And again, they were going through some of these contracts from some of these guys that are getting millions. Like, I think it was even the $92 million deal. It's only going to basically cost against our cap this year with Ridley is like $10 million. It's the next year. You got to worry about top tier saying we got to save around $11 million. Uh, Cass says, do you think the Titans are done in free agents? I don't think they're done. They got a few holes. They got to fill Cass and uh, they do have some players coming in. You guys mentioned a few. Uh, I going to go to my list right now. Let's go to play my next player. So we, we talked about Donovan Smith a little bit. Now let's talk about, oh man, let's figure this one out. Here's the one, right? Chase Young. He's on the profile, the thumbnail, right? Chase Young coming in, we think maybe this week, early this week. He visited, um, I thought he visited Carolina, but. Some of the reports I read is he's going to be visiting Carolina. He's going to be visiting um, the Saints, which I don't think have a lot of cap room. I didn't think Seattle had a lot of cap room, and they ended up signing Baker, the linebacker that he really wanted. So that kind of stinks. Um, but, no, Chase Young's a guy that, like, again, I know some of you are out on him. You don't want to go back down memory road with Clowney. I totally understand that. You have every right to think and say that. This guy, I mean, he's been with Washington. They They traded him. Second overall pick from Ohio State. They traded him. Then you got guys like, um, I don't know. Um, whoa, we're talking about San Francisco. Same thing. You know, then they ended up trading, or not trading, but they're not going to re-sign him. So, it's like, I totally get what, what's going on here. But, but on the other side, there are some things that I feel like there's so much upside with him that he's only going to be 25, guys. He's only going to be 25. If you're so confident in your coaching staff, which I know you are, 
especially on the defense side of the ball of Wilson, with defensive court, I, you got to be willing to take a chance on a guy like um, Chase Young and bring him in if you can. You definitely have a need. Imagine him working with Landry, him working with Simmons. I know it didn't work out in San Francisco, right? Didn't work out in San Francisco. But here's the thing. Guy still had 10 sacks last year. 10 sacks on this defensive line, y'all. I think it sounds pretty good. So I don't know how much you're going to have to pay him. But again, 48 hurry, 66 pressures. Get out of town. Could you imagine having that on this roster? So many people think he sucks, right? So many people think he sucks. And, and part of it is injuries. Last year's best game at New York Giants, 90 overall score, okay? 90 overall score for a Chase Young. The years before um, over the season, so if we go back season grades, rookie year, it's when Brady was like fearing for his life when he played Washington in the playoffs. 87.2 defensive score overall. The next year, 2021, 75.1, right? And then 78.4 and 74.4. Like, he's still really good, and he's young. He's Chase Young, right? So, yes, I'm getting a little fired up, even though it's 11 o'clock at night and I should be going to bed. But I'm staying up for you all. That I'm really intrigued by this the more and more I look at it. Now, yeah, I'm scared. San Francisco passes, Washington passes. Yeah, that freaks me out a little bit. But as Cass says, are we done free agency? Heck no. I hope we do sign him soon. It's time to embrace the suck. You're going to have to be content with bad a couple of years so you restock from the draft and develop talents. But the Texans, man, and they're in the same conference as us. And look at Jacksonville. They were good, and then they lost to us in the last week and then make the playoffs. 59 likes. Yes, you can definitely help the channel out. By hitting that like button, those three dots in the upper right-hand corner, boom, boom, boom. Of course, if you see that red button in front of it, the subscribe button, it would be nice if you'd hit that as well. Braxton says, what do you think is a fair price for Sneed? I don't want Sneed. And, and the only reason, Braxton, I don't want Sneed is because you got to do a double whammy. It's the same reason I didn't want to trade for T. Higgins. You know, you're doing a double whammy. You're giving up multiple picks. Some are even saying giving up picks this year and next year. Oh, good grief. And you got to pay him an enormous contract. No, I'm out. I'm just putting my foot down saying no. I'm not doing it. Now, I'm sure you could talk me into it. I'm sure you guys all have reasons. But I think we talked about, I'm going to bring it up again. The line. There it is. There's your line. I don't really care about being talked about for a week, it's always going to be the same. Did the Chiefs fleece the Titans? Why didn't New England trade for him? Those are the things. Why did nobody else want him? And he ended up in Nashville. It's never about us. So even though we make a trade, it's never going to be about us. We learned that with A.J. Brown. It's never going to be about us. So when it comes to Sneed, like, I know it seems exciting, but I just, you're giving up so much. And I honestly, I don't see a lot of the return investment from it. I think he had a good year. It's great. He's physical. It's great. You know, he threw Tyreek to the ground. It's awesome. But again, it's a double whammy. We learned this with Julio Jones, and that wasn't even... I mean, I guess that was terrible too, right? Because it cost you a lot of money and it gave you gave up a second or whatever. Oh, uh, you don't even watch the Titans. Who are you talking about, Sin City? Uh, project or Project the XX. This is a great step up for uh, forward for Levis. These pickups, defensive holes are critical pieces that are missing. We can redraft wide receiver and running back with a Levis is more experienced. Power Hour says, tighten up that like button. The boss working hard to give you solid content. Power Hour will be live tomorrow night, so shout out to the Power Hour. He's always doing a great job of keeping us in the loop, Rossi and myself, um, with what are – because I'm not really on Twitter anymore, but or X, but he's definitely helping us out for sure. Colts Twitter has said that the compensation had been settled 
on it. Uh, it's getting a deal done for Snead, which is rumored above $22 million. We asked him about that. Colts and Titans apparently are the two teams. The quality is good. I hit the like. I've always hit the like for the upload network. Thanks, MB. We appreciate you on the channel. I'm sorry for bringing it up so much. I mean, not that the appreciation, not that. I'm talking about the like button stuff. Just kind of what we got to do, I guess. Uh, we should get, let's see, we should get or two more. I'm not sure what that is. Derek, let me know. No, Andrew, it's not. Andrew Luck still in the Colts books. Oh, okay. Yeah, Bakatari, whatever his name is, from Green Bay. Um, the problem with him are injuries. He's 34 whatever years old, and he's got a lot of injuries. So um, that's a problem. You know, I mean, again, shot in the dark. Don't have to pay him a lot. Bring him along. But he may want to be brought along by a team that might be going to the Super Bowl. Like, you know what I mean? Like, top-tier Super Bowl. Tennessee Titans, last time I checked, are like 27, 28, 29th. Maybe 30th now, but 27, 28, 29th in that category of winning a Super Bowl, according to Vegas. I didn't think Colts fans existed after Luck retired. And like people, I get it, but Anvil, just like XD Gamer, I mean, Anvil's a member of the 145 Club. So Anvil's like, hey, look, I'm a Colts fan and I'm still a member of the 145 Club out of respect, right? So Anvil's a great dude. So I'm never going to get on Anvil. And again, I want fans from other teams to come in and tell us stuff because here's the thing. We've been through this. There's so many times we bring in guys like Andre Dillard and we're thinking, yeah, they're good. They're former first round. We're going to bring them back and they're going to be great. And then the Eagle fans are like, no, this is terrible. I feel bad for you. It's not going to work out. It's going to be disastrous. And it was like, you just hear so much from fans. And that's why the YouTube platform is awesome. For the and, and again, I, I think they all are, right? Instagram and, and some of the other ones. They're all great when it comes to bringing in a bunch of fans, bringing in a lot of people to talk. But again, now it's it's kind of a different since the sickness happened in 2020 or whatever it is. Now it, you know, everybody's in on it and um like media wise and players and and that's fine. It's great. It's more content for all of you guys. But uh, it still always should be about the fan is my point, at least on this platform. Uh, you all, I don't know when that is. I don't have that in front of me um, at this point. But uh, apparently what I'm hearing is this week sometime. Uh, but we're not number one on the list, apparently. Could be three, right, as far as visits go. I already, I already thought he'd visit Carolina, but Port I just – Read off to you guys when I started the show was like Carolina's like it's Carolina, New Orleans, then us, but we'll see. Chef Ran, love it, man. Add edge. We are done on offense. Uh like add an edge rusher or like someone on the edge like left tackle. So I'm assuming you're meaning left tackle. Great linebackers are in the draft. That's a great thing, man. I hope I hope that's true. Cheap and young and fast. Yeah, if you combined them, they'd almost be as good as Ryan. Evan says, you guys had Tannehill, basically Carson, and Matt combined. Awesome. Harpoon says, why is Vrabel a personal assistant, man? Dude is awful. Uh, top tier says, plenty of tackles in this year's draft. Charlie, Willie Gay went to New Orleans. Dang it. So he's off the list. Good call. See, I told you guys, you never disappoint. I'm here saying, hey, he might be an option, and you're like, nope. Went to the Saints upload. Uh, I wouldn't trade Burks for a fourth. I wouldn't do it either. Chase Young is the next big signing got to be. I would love it. I'm in on it. Not, I'm not easily as sold as you guys can tell because most of you guys think I'm super negative about everything. Some of you even question my fandom from the Titans, which is fair, I guess. But, man, Chase Young. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm just feel like we're going to hit lightning in a bottle for once we're due. And he said, do you even remember luck decided to retire before 30 rather than play for the Smurfs boss, man, you can go to left tackle 38, go through like Patrick uh, Paul, who only allowed two sacks in two years. They'll definitely need a wide receiver D hop, not getting any younger next season. I'm sure it's going to come up Bossman underscore gem, but I also feel like at the end of the day, man, if you can solidify that left side, 
it depends on your draft grades, and we don't we don't have those according to Rand. He hasn't given them given them to the network yet. But um, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. But I but I do feel like if left tackle's high on their board, and I, I just think you got to do it. You just got to get it done eventually, right? Uh, you guys had one good year two years ago, and now you're the worst team in the AFC South. How do y'all feel? Evan, are you talking about me? The Titans? We should have had three. John Robinson screwed that one up. But whatever. Jared says, I highly doubt Mason said the racist stuff. Sin City says, uh, things got dark quick. Up. I know. That's why you, you're up late at night. It, it can happen, right? So we're all good, guys. We do, I think this is what we need. I know we only do it for the widescreen, but we all need to get in here and have a huddle. Okay, we're all good. We're all in the AFC South. We're all fans of football teams in the NFL. Okay? There are way more important things out there to worry about. Us in this community having a good time talking football is not one of them. So... Let's get a break. Let's get out there. Let's get some more positive comments. Team on me, team on three. One, two, three. Okay. Good job, guys. You're getting better. You're getting better. All right. I'm going to have to change my name to coach. I'm going to have to start calling me coach. No more upload. We'll just call it, uh, uh, I don't know, the coach network. That doesn't work, does it? Yeah. The Titan coach. No, that don't work either. Coach Titan. There it is. New name. I'm no longer Titan Upload. I'm Coach Titan. Let's go. Hey, Coach Titan. No, I'm just kidding. We swept y'all with Minshew. Oh, we got Evan talking Colts trash. That's fair, Evan. It's fair. But can we at least be honest, Evan? Like, how y'all going to say Richardson's going to be the next best thing since sliced bread when he only played four games and he literally did nothing against us? Landry took him out, which was – Freak accident, right? I don't want anybody to get hurt. But then Minshew comes in and plays out of his mind, and we ended up being better off with Richardson playing than Minshew. I mean, that again, he's young. It's fine. But that's all I'm going to say on that. I don't know, Lame201. Shout out to you, though. Um, but I do know, as we, we mentioned it earlier, he was at a fundraiser. And uh, where I, I would assume it was a fundraiser, okay? I'm guessing it was a fun based on the picture, but they took a picture when Ridley got signed. It was some dude. I don't know who that guy was. And they're all golfing together. And uh, Kinsey was with Levis and they were both wearing Titan stuff. My guess is when Will Levis goes golfing, his number one option is not to put a bunch of Titans gear on and go golfing. Like I do, dude, I know he loves working and, and, and playing for the Titans. But when it, when it's his own free time and, and, you know, his own time and Kinsey had Titan stuff on too, like I don't know if they're they're going to right away to the Titan stuff because I don't know this for a fact either, but my guess is the Titans probably give away a lot of their clothes to the players and the coaches, right? So they're not even paying for that stuff. So I'm not sure they just want to put it on all the time and wear it like us fans would. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Corey Davis cannot come back. He retired. Well, if they, he's coming back to the NFL, and the Col or the Jets could let him go. So then he could come back. How awesome would that be? William Young says, Corey, let's go. Uh, is your team having the, apparently the Colts? No offense. No offense to the NWI, but I'd take da I'd definitely take Davis over him. Right now in the chat. We have 107 watching. Shout out to you guys. We have 220 votes. 58% are saying no. So we'll go a little bit longer. I still got a couple guys we'll talk about here. So, we'll, we'll, again, you could help us out by the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Breaker, breaker, 225. Breaker, breaker. We need to know the linebacker. Bald and bearded. I just hate when I got to wait at least five months to see some action. It's true. We're at that point. We'll get the draft in, and then in the next – We'll get the ski, uh, schedule release, and then it, <clears throat> it's a long way. It's a long way, okay? Just don't overpay. I like that. Jordan says, I'm glad we release Andre Dillard. Um, he gave me no, – I'm not going to say that out loud, Jordan, because that stuff I don't mess with, man. I mean, I, I wouldn't even put that on anybody, but um, I agree with you in the fact that I was super excited 
when he got released. I was getting terrified that Rand was bringing him back. I'm like, oh my gosh, no. William says, if the Titans give Kenneth Murray, um, then you'll have to take a chance on Young. I mean, they need to figure out linebacker. And again, you cannot say Kenneth Murray is going to be this run stopper because he's not. That's not him. So you're going to have to have other guys fill that role. And I'm not putting that all on Dr. Gibby when I'm paying him $950,000 to play middle linebacker. Again, Vrabel's gone. So I don't even know how good Dr. Gibby really is. But the point is, like, you, you're you going to need another decent linebacker. So if it happens to be the draft, fine. Uh, Breaker Breaker says we can get Zaven Howard from the Dolphins for cheap top five corner. Uh, he says, Chef says facts on Chase Young. Bobby says Ravens flock in the house. Thoughts on King Henry leaving? We all knew. I would say the majority of Titan fans knew when he grabbed the microphone and started talking at the stadium against the after a big win, an emotional win against the Jaguars, knocking them out of the playoffs. We all knew he was done, and I don't blame him. And and apparently from reports, and he was on uh, Boston with the boys. They were trying to get him to tell him who the team was that was really trying to trade for him because Derek said there was somebody that was really serious about bringing him in. Fortunately, it didn't work out. The Ravens. They 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 were he wouldn't say it, but he said it, if that makes sense. MB says Sneep Sneed Sneep Sneed is overhyped. Yangsty says uh Young is perfect on a one year prove it deal. Uh I'd actually do this. I'd give him, I'd give him two. I would invest in him. So then his second year comes, he's still playing for you. And then you'll have to decide because here's the thing in Madden. I know this isn't Madden. This is what you do. If you can get these guys like cheaper, then you try to get them to sign a multiple year deal. So you have them and they're playing out of this world and they're not costing you hardly anything. And then they're very possible trade options down the line too. You just do a one year, seven million dollars or whatever. It'd probably be more than that. Let's say ten. Okay, it's probably gonna be more than that. How about eleven point five? So one year, eleven point five. You bring him into the Titans. He goes off. Now he's possibly too expensive to even resign. I, most of the players won't do that though. They want the one year, and it makes sense too. But yeah, I appreciate King Henry. Um, will always love King Henry on this channel. And I'm really excited to see what he does for the Ravens as long as he's not playing us. Because I think with their style and, and, you know, better offensive line for sure right now, I think, you know, the sky's the limit with him. This wasn't like Eddie George moving to the Cowboys. Like most of us kind of knew, even though Eddie was my favorite player of all time, and I still think he could come back and play for the Titans and do well. You just kind of knew Eddie's time was running up with those injuries to his feet, like to his foot and stuff. That when he went to Dallas, it just looked a step slower. I don't, I don't think Derek did slow down a little bit, but I don't, I don't think that at all with Derek going to the Ravens. I, th- I think the Ravens made a smart move. Hey, Duncan, what's going on? Duncan Idaho in the news or in, in the house. Uh, Levy, any news on safety? Justin Simmons. Speaking of Justin Simmons, let's go back to the old board here. Um, Justin Simmons was another one that I believe would make perfect sense for the Tennessee Titans. And again, we've went through Justin Simmons. So it's not like, you know, when it comes to Simmons, it's, it's nothing new. Justin Simmons didn't have the best year last year. I mean, he was okay, but man, he was a rock star the, f- the first couple of years for sure. Like he was legitimately with Bayard. And I always bring up the year we picked up Clowney. We played Denver in week one. That was the one dude when you when you broke down the game you were worried about was Simmons. But the issue with Simmons is he wants to get paid. He still thinks he can play, obviously. And um he wants to he wants to get paid. So he's not in any rush. He will take his time. He's not in a rush. So this thing could play out well after the draft. Maybe even in the middle of the summer. Um, Again, 225 votes. We haven't had a vote in a while. 58% are saying, hey, the draft, it's not over as far as free agency. We need to still worry about that. And then 42% are saying, yeah, it's pretty much over. Let's 
zero in in the draft, and then we'll worry about this other stuff. But again, when it comes to Justin Simmons, you need a safety. I should have mentioned that. Amani Hooker, you can't release him. I know some of you want to because you want to save a little bit more cap room. And, and safety's kind of become a dime a dozen. I mean, look at what Bayard signed for in Chicago. Not that much at all for a two-year deal. So when it comes to Justin Simmons, though, like you need a companion, though, for Monty Hooker. Hooker's good when he plays. The problem is, is he always gets hurt. But isn't that the problem with most of the Titans? <laughs> Traylon Burks gets hurt a lot. You know, we always talked about Lawan always getting hurt. Um, you know, these guys go down all the time, it seems like. Was that Vrabel? Could have been. Could have been Vrabel. I mean, let's be honest, the, the team like led the league in, in injuries. Was it three straight years? I mean, that's hard to do. Is that coincidental, like some people said? I don't, I don't think so. That seems to be like a coaching issue. Yeah, I mean, Xavier Howard, I don't think he signed yet. I mean, I think I looked him up. I don't think he signed yet. Xavier Howard from the uh, Dolphins. At this point, no, he's still available. So, again, they said he slowed down some. You know, he's not as fast as he used to be. We'll see what happens. Leon, shout out to Leon for being a member. Leon says, Skaronsky, Cushenberry, Alt, hold the line. Levis, Hop, Ridley can catch the ball. I mean, that that that's going to put up points on the board, and that's going to really tell if he's the real deal or not when it comes to Will Levis. I mean, and still, Brunskill will be okay. And then you're hoping somebody steps up at right tackle, and you got to put a little bit on, on um, Callahan on that. You can go left tackle 38, though. Patrick Paul, you know, I think I already read that one, didn't I? Definitely D-Hop. I think I read that one already. Duncan says, does o OBJ offer a team anything? I mean, I think we've went the route with Brain and Ridley. We're good. I'm not going to, like, overpay for, uh, for Beckham Jr., but looking up his stats for the Ravens, he actually – did pretty well last year, surprisingly. You guys think Levis or Rudolph is going to save you? Well, I mean, that's a serious question. Will Levis, for sure. Will Levis. But but again, I, Evan, if it's okay. You can still talk. It, it's I, I don't know where you're coming from because you guys aren't good either right now. You're in the same boat as us. We were actually supposed to be better than y'all this year. I know it didn't happen. You swept us. Good for you. But, again, for, like, talking trash to Titan fans, I mean, we go back to history, and then we'll just kind of close the book and move on where you could say, hey, you know, we we had Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck. We we did this, and we were 11-0 against you, and we, we won this Super Bowl, and we lost this Super Bowl. You got to no Super Bowls. I, I understand that. Well, one, right? But at the same time, like, I think we're kind of in the same boat. Hey, if you haven't watched Cave Moore Sports, you need to go check him out. That's Ken Moore, by the way. So we'll get Ken Moore on the channel, uh, not during a live YouTube shorts, but we'll get him on the, the big screen, right? The wide screen, and we'll, we'll bring him in, and I can't wait to hear his thoughts on free agency, but also the draft. And um, like I said, shout out to Ken Moore. Go visit him on YouTube and hit that like button or subscribe button and the like button too. Jordan says the Mayo Man is going to lead us to the Super Bowl. Let's go. Let's go. There it is. Levy says, all right, Coach Titan, let's go. Titan coach just sounds ridiculous. Coach Titan, though, man. You got to watch that Coach Titan. Brayden, does Isaiah Simmons move the needle? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'll look him up. I mean, he's one of those guys that was drafted pretty well, right? Um, gets drafted by the Cardinals. Uh, 6'4", 238, drafted eight overall in the first round. Last year, his pass rush grade was 44.1. Oof. His coverage grade, though, was good, 82.7. Run defense, not so well, 54.7. Um, but his overall score was 68.9. Uh-oh, the lights are telling me I'm overdoing it here uh, we'll go 10 more minutes but but here's the thing like overall last year he had one sack nine missed tackles yikes uh passer rating allowed 77.2 
Uh, his career, again, same situation with Young. Starts off with Car or, um, Arizona and then ends up getting moved to the Giants. His best game last year was Seattle, week four, 90.5 overall defensive grade. That's pretty good. Uh, again, week 11 at Washington, a 85.8 overall grade. So that's really good, too. But he did have some scores in the 40s. He had a 46.1 against Washington earlier in the year. Best thing from that, guys, again, week seven, Washington, terrible score. Uh, we go all the way to week 11, good score. So he's improving, right? But overall, like I said, rookie year, 59.9. 2021 even worse 51 and then he's getting a little bit better 67.9 in 2022 and last year 68.9 so if you asked me personally is this willing to bring him in I mean I'd have to ask some giant fans I, I got one I'll ask tomorrow um, I'll have to ask my buddy A to Z um, over there in Arizona uh, to see what he thinks about this guy because I, I really am going to value his mind more than, than some of these other people. But, again, if you're looking at the situation when it comes to Murray, I give me Isaiah Simmons for sure over Murray. I don't know how much he's going to cost. Anyways, let's keep going. Philly special cards. Hey, shout out to you, man. I want some special cards. Be a Will Levis cards, man. Now tighten up to you, Philly. Philly special in the house. TJ, are you Eli Mack? I'm not. I'm enjoying AJ Brown. Now we're getting to the real trash talk. No, I'm just kidding. You know, some of the people have just ridiculous. They they they're they're on this whole little like teeter totter thing. Remember the teeter totter when we were kids? Those of you that are a little bit older, younger ones, I don't know if you have the teeter totter. But it's like you're up and you're down and you're up and you're down and you're up and you're down and you're up and you're down. No, I'm not doing the teapot there. Here's what I'm saying, right? It's it's just ridiculous. So on one half, when the trade happens, you're all for it because you don't think AJ is going to sign. There were like 60, at least 60% Titan fans that felt that way. Then the whole thing happens. You're like, oh, that's why John Robinson got fired. Ha, ha, ha. Told you, told you, right? And then in the middle, when AJ's tearing everything up, you're like, oh, we should have never traded him. It's just like a whole roller coaster of emotions. I'll tell you up front, and I've never shied away from this. I've been wrong about a lot, by the way. I don't know this. The AJ Brown trade was literally one of the dumbest moves ever in Titans franchise history. And number two, you didn't even need to trade him because A.J. Brown would have had to play for $4 million or sit out the entire season. The, the CBA doesn't allow players to sit out the entire season on their rookie contracts. I mean, they can, but they're, they're digging their own hole. That's why that CBA was put in place, to protect teams from people in the draft, getting drafted to a team, and then trying to hold out after like year two. A.J. played above his draft grade. I totally understand that. But that year, he would have had to play for $4 million, and he would have because Vrabel liked him. He liked Vrabel deep down. Robinson panicked and ended up screwing his job up. I mean, it really did. And then Amy panicked and fired him. So, yeah, after just giving him a, an extension. Philly says, Justin Simmons said it, he doesn't get the offer he wants, that he'll join his favorite coach, Fangio and the Eagles. Oh, the richer get richer, right? Connor Wright, y'all think the Titans could swoop in, sweep in and steal Sneed? I don't want to, Connor. So I don't know who you want or who your team is. Thanks for stopping by, but I don't want him. I don't want him. Brian says we need defense help badly. We have nobody. We need some linebackers. We need some linebackers. So if I go back to my list, I don't have any help. So we've already talked about uh, Donovan Smith. could probably help you out at right tackle. We've already talked about uh, Simmons. We've talked about Young. Obviously, we've talked about Steven Nelson being a corner. He's older, but he's still available. 
Here's a guy that you 